Oh, Ashes is a single singularity. DirectX twelve. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we so, got we got to some of that. Um, oh, the async compute shaders, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. like a really interesting thing. So should we um, set that? Should we set that up? Because that there was a there was a benchmark that came out while we were at IDF. Right? Yeah, I didn't touch um, it, but but it was basically the guys uh, building a new game uh, Oxide at Oxide Games, Dan Baker. Um, they have a benchmark. It's one of the first DirectX 12 benchmarks. And what it showed was basically there was a more gain for a Radeon going from DX11 to DX12 than for a Maxwell-based GeForce, generally speaking. And Which number is of, exactly what anyone should have expected if they knew the architecture. Right. right. And one of the keys to that was that the, uh, the Radeon has these structures called asynchronous compute engines that have been there since like the first... GCN 7970s. Right. Um, but the, the thing is, it's interesting to know why it was put in there, which is because this is like not in any DX. This was GCN was explicitly designed for the consoles. Mm -hmm. And so the consoles do have this because they've always had this very low level, you know, DX 12 mantle, you know, metal uh, Vulcan like API. And so, you know, AMD put it in there, and it really didn't help them for a long time. But then, you know, NVIDIA, not having any console business, didn't really care, uh, right? There was just no motivation to put it in because it was a feature that no one could use. Right. And so, you know, what this lets you do is you can have compute shaders. It's kind of like simultaneous multi-threading for a CPU, where you have essentially, you can have your graphics or your synchronous compute shaders running at the same time as an async compute shader. And so because you can get multiple shaders in the GPU at the same time, you can more fully take advantage of all of the uh, cores and you can make more use out of the hardware. And so this is actually really useful for things like VR, where you can use your compute, your async compute shader for things like uh, a perspective warp. Um, I would assume that NVIDIA and AMD will figure out how to get this done in uh, the future. Uh, you know, so for Pascal, um, I think, you know, I'm just looking at this question right now and I see he's also asking about HP, like Pascal's arrival date is a really interesting question. So, and that's the, that's the generation beyond Maxwell. Right. Of, of Next NVIDIA GPUs. GPUs. Yeah. So here's the thing. NVIDIA needs to get this out as soon as possible, not because, you know, they're doing fine on the graphics side, but Knight's Landing is coming out this year. And that's Intel's high-end HPC-oriented part. And the thing is, like, comparing raw specifications, it's better than any of NVIDIA's compute products. Um, just in terms of, like, peak flops and memory bandwidth and all these other things. On top of that, it's fully x86 compatible. It doesn't need a host processor. It'll come, flavors of it will come integrated with OmniPath, which is Intel's version of InfiniBand. And so it's going to be a real monster and be very attractive for HPC users who haven't looked at CUDA. Right, so if you've already bought into CUDA, you know you're pretty. You're, you're going to be happy with Nvidia. You're going to probably stick with them. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the fence, you were a little slow. Your your app wasn't supported. Like Knight's Landing looks really great, and so Nvidia is going to be under huge competitive pressure to release a high end Pascal as soon as possible. The wrinkle is, as as JTS eight 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 pointed out, well, if they're using HBM two, the availability on that's not clear. That's expensive stuff. Right, the th this 2.5D packaging is not cheap. You know, Joe Macri aside, like you know, I was at lunch with the guys who did uh, Hybrid Memory Cube, and they flat out said like, Hybrid Memory Cube is more expensive, is sorry, less expensive than HBM, period. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you know. HBM is not really, you know, a super mature high volume technology yet. It's getting there. Um, and then they're also working with TSMC's 16 nanometer process. And so the real interesting question is, 
when can NVIDIA actually and TSMC yield out, you know, a giant die? Because, right, the, the first Maxwell chip, if it's targeting HPC, it's probably going to be 400 millimeters squared, right? And I cannot name a single product except for an FPGA, and those don't quite count because they're different, that is yielding on TSMC's 20 nanometer process in like really good volumes. Like Oracle has some server chips, haven't seen them go into production yet really. Um, so there might be some, th there might be problems there. On the other hand, like if I was NVIDIA and I had the ability to do it, I would launch that guy at supercomputing this year in November to take the wind out of Intel sales. Um, so, you know, what's going to happen there? That's a really interesting question. It depends on how aggressive I NVIDIA is moving to new process technologies. I mean, clearly they have a need to do so. But, you know, my observation is that historically, NVIDIA was much less aggressive about process technology. When they got aggressive, they got burned. Mm -hmm. But NVIDIA is also a much, they, they have much better physical design than they used to. And, and maybe it's something they can pull off now. Yeah. So, yeah, Ash is a singularity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, I, I would expect that Pascal has the ability to do asynchronous compute shaders. Right. right? Well, I mean, and uh, this is, this is, this is. Yeah, there's a lot involved in the the question here because Dave, there are people who are like at least posing online as GeForce owners. I doubt they're real people, but I don't know who are saying they're going to send their GeForce cards back because they don't support asynchronous compute engines the same way as GCN. Um, so be, I've oh, got because they're they're afraid that guys they're like, afraid DirectX 12 won't run well on GeForces. Okay, so obviously AMD is going to get a much bigger benefit from a uh, DX12, right? Mm -hmm. In part because their drivers are just not as good as NVIDIA's. Um, but look, so for every person out there on the internet who is really unhappy with the performance of your, your Titan card or your 980, like, shoot me a line, I'll take it off your hand. <laughs> Right, like you can go out and buy a Radeon. Like if you want to go get yourself a new graphics card, whether it's, you know, whether it's Nvidia or AMD. But if you think that that 980 just isn't going to cut it because it doesn't have asynchronous compute, send it to me. I'll take care of it and put it in a good home. Yeah. Well, so so there are three there are three things with asynchronous compute that I want to understand the difference between, like, uh, like say Fiji, or Hawaii. Yeah the latest the big gcns and maxwell right and because there, there there are three separate things i think that i would i would put into important categories here one of them is the ability to queue multiple different types of work yep um and uh nvidia has had well, in not its just queue but also you can queue it but you want to get it into the shader right you need to dispatch it right oh, okay so so let's let's yeah so you want to you want to have that nvidia's had the ability to do that since Fermi, I believe they've had this hyper Q feature um, that, uh, in the I, big chip. No, it was in GK110. GK110 is where they've 32 different uh, queued items in hardware. Um, right, but I think they have to be of the same type. I don't think that that's the other one. Is is can you run kernels of different types on the GPU concurrently? Right, right. and and then the last one is preemption. Um, right. Yeah, you got to be able to like, especially if you can't. Uh, run different things concurrently like you need to stop and start something else and what does that look like right right so, um, so, so I've been told by uh, folks at oculus mm -hmm. that the preemption is and this was prior to the skylight gen 9 architecture which has some pr better preemption mm -hmm. but that the best preemption support for context switches was with AMD by far. Mm -hmm. Right. Intel was pretty good and Nvidia was possibly catastrophic. <laughs> um, like I mean what they so the the real issue is if you have a gra a shader running, a graphics shader, you need to let it finish and you know it could take you a long time. It could take you over 16 milliseconds to finish. I mean, I have heard from like, you know, and this is from engineers 
who were working on like really crazy stuff in the driver of like graphics shaders that took a couple seconds to run. And you know, obviously something is totally busted. Right. But um that's it's completely unworkable for real time anything. Right. Yeah. I mean this is this is really great for your PowerPoint slideshow, maybe. Um but the point is, and, and NVIDIA is very, you know, to their credit, they're open and honest about this and how you tune for Oculus Rift is that you have to be super careful because you can miss a frame boundary because the preemption is not particularly low latency. And again, this is, it's not like this is a bad decision on the part of NVIDIA. It's, you know, that's just, that's what made sense. And like preemption wasn't something that was super important when the chip was designed and the API support was, was it, it, there wasn't as much bang for your buck. And so n now, you know, I'm sure they're going to improve that in Pascal, right? Yeah. NVIDIA is full of good, sharp architects, and, and, and they'll probably fix it in Pascal. Yeah, well, and that, that is one of those things that they kind of projected better preemption for Maxwell, but then they didn't build a Maxwell for GPU compute like HPC type scenarios, right? They, yeah, I mean, they don't Maxwell's, have a big one for, for that. I mean, Maxwell's not really a great fit for compute uh, because I think the way it got more power efficient is they threw out a lot of the scheduling hardware, almost all of it. And again, NVIDIA hasn't talked about this, but, you know, and that's a fine thing to do. It increases your power efficiency, especially for graphics where you can compile it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you generally know that they're going to be doing the same stuff. The problem is, like, in c compute land, you can never be sure what your crazy users are going to do. So, you, you, you... You know, the the value, I mean, look, Intel has a full-blown out-of-order core in Knight's Landing. You know, they didn't do it because they're dumb, right? They did it because it's a good idea. And and the point, well, I mean, they also want to be able to run sequential code, which a GPU just can't really do, period. Right. But, I mean, the, the, the point is compute workloads are sort of inherently unpredictable, and so some of the tricks that were great in graphics are just not amenable to compute. And we've seen this historically, right, where there's a different core with more shared memory and different double precision and single precision balance right. for NVIDIA's HPC parts. And, and so I think they just looked at Maxwell and they said, look, we're, you know, these are the resources we have. Here are our competitive pressures. You know, just do Pascal. And, and it makes sense, probably. I mean, I can see that because the the GPUs that we have, Fiji and Maxwell uh, GM200, are mm -hmm. really kind of retargeted because 20 nanometers didn't work out. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I mean, they, they, they're, they're what they had to do at the time. Yeah, um, that's right. <laughs>